So I'm going to read a poem about what it's like to have Parkinson's so that you can all experience the same thing that I do. All you need to know is that I live north of the city and my doctors are all in the city, so when I come to see a doctor, I ride the Metro North train down along the Hudson River and I look at the river and I write my poetry. A brisk fall day, a wintry day, I ride the train beside the river, look outside and see the mist which hangs like gauze and blocks the, the view of Jersey's cliffs and trees and rocks. I'm on my way to see some doctors. One will snip the stitches, six, which she had sewn two weeks ago to close a cyst excision. The cyst was big. How big? Well, just envision some great bloody human eyeball and you'll get the picture if you picture pools of stinky slime the white orb sat upon. I had that cyst for years and now it's gone. The other doc will check my hacking lungs. I'm coughing almost nightly. I'm not young. I'm overworked and overstressed. And yet, I still try to get all I can get. I don't sleep enough, work out enough. My diet could be better. But it's tough to lead a fast-paced life. Do what you want. Keep up on news. Try all that's all, all, au courant. On top of that, my Parkinson's disease just mucks my mind up, puts me ill at ease, puts me on this train so many times, pushes me to put down many rhymes. Poetry that springs from inner doubt, doubt how long I'll walk about without support, how long I still can function, accept invites to some neighbor's luncheon, climb the stairs at home while holding still, a brimming cup of coffee I don't spill. Dress myself while standing on both legs. Express myself precisely, not sound vague, not talk with halting, stagger, stammer speech, stuck mid-sentence, words now out of reach of my now frozen mind. And furthermore, I'm scared of choking. Every time I pour a tall, cool glass of water, I'm afraid the water will explode like a grenade back in my throat because my epiglottis fails to close the trachea. What this process swallowing, which used to flow like liquid silk, is now more like a death blow as my eyes spurt tears and mouth expels the fluid that I need to drink to dwell on earth like everybody else. It's morbid. Drinking now is like being waterboarded. When things get really bad, my mind gets worse. Forget me putting down some rhyming verse. Instead, I ponder, how can I go on? Sleep, sleep fitfully, get up before the dawn, slog to work and put in many hours, get anxious due to my declining powers. Oh yes, I wonder, how can I go on? The answer is I'm driven by the urge to do things that forestall the creeping scourge of Parkinson's, like writing this long poem, which I, composed while traveling from home on a train en route to see some doc. My current calendar is chock-a-block with medical appointments. I'm delighted when I ride the train, ideas ignited in my brain, what joy. And then there's this, I work out at the gym and feel bliss. My weekly ping pong lesson falls, forces all of my attention on a spinning ball that I hit with a slanted puck, and puck, it spins back, puck, my mind's thus not gridlocked. And open water distance swims have banished depressing thoughts. Anxieties too vanish when I push myself at something that I revel in. Living tit for tat with this incurable disease, I find I have the upper hand and that my mind, while losing dopamine, still works fine at cooking tasty meals when I, when I dine. Still works fine when reading books at night before I go to sleep. And when I write a blog post, story, poem, or email, I'm often pleased as punch because I nail exactly what I wanted to inscribe. A sonnet, say, a blog post diatribe. The urge to do things that I revel in was always there before my Parkinson's wreaked havoc on my brain, my leg, my arm. Its source, a cosmic force, which, like a charm, spurs all humanity to forge ahead. Climb a mountain, maybe bake some bread, paint a picture, join a local band, 
volunteer to lend a helping hand when hurricanes or earthquakes devastate some portion of the earth, or just create a quiet space where people, much like you, can gather in companionship in lieu of fuming solo at the constant friction of politicians claiming facts are fiction. The urge to do things helps me counteract the ravage of PD. Now that's a fact. But don't forget that bladder urgency can be a five alarm emergency. <laughs> Puck. <laughs>